thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Fill us with your joy, peace, and power, and victory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we're in Luke 22 still, and um, we're going to be in uh, CSB today, I think. And um, we're getting to the part of the story that everybody knows about and none of us know enough about. <laughs> so we've we've had Seder, and now um, we get to Jews, the garden. Yeah. Rich? Jews, his betrayal is in, in motion, so to speak. Uh, but we're moving from the Seder to uh, the Garden of Gethsemane here. <clears throat> and uh, we're picking it up in uh, Luke 22, verse 39. We're using the Christian Standard Bible, CSB, and here we go. He went out and made his way. Jesus went out and made his way, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. Okay, so just to set the scene here, this is a... Mount is a little strong for what we would think about this. This yeah. is a hill yeah. next to the city, and it was a common place for Jesus and others to go. I mean, it was a a, a park um, per se. It was and an olive grove. Olive grove. Olive grove you. on the side of the uh, Mount of Olives. It's about like uh, Telegraph Hill. Yeah. On Route Six, Round Exit Six. Okay. It's about that size and height and so forth. Okay. So this is a usual place. I mean. Jesus was a real person. He walked real footsteps in real places, in real time, and he had favorite places to go, to sure. pray, to be alone, to yeah. enjoy the beauty of the area. This, The, the humanity of Jesus in these passages um, is easily overlooked because he's going to the cross yeah. to die for my sins and yours, but which, of course, he has to be human to do. That's right. <laughs> can't do it if he's not God, human. God can't die. God can't die. So. Okay. So so they went out from this Seda across to the hill, Mount, and... Yeah, the Seda uh, was in what, Bethany or... Uh, Bethany or Bethphage? Just uh, over the just over the top of the crest of this little hill. Yeah. In one of those neighboring. Oh no, no, no way. No way. I'm sorry. They're in this is the I'm sorry. That's the uh the Seder in the upper room in Jerusalem. That's right. Yeah. Sorry okay. about that. So and so Jesus is going to the mount, mm -hmm. disciples following him. They just had dinner, they just watched the Lord Jesus wash their feet. They just had this discussion about who's greater. They just had this discussion about Peter's betrayal and you all. Mm -hmm. And they were just um, informed that there was a betrayer among them. So follows Jesus to the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, verse 40. When he reached the place, he told them, pray that you may not fall into temptation. You know, this is a word I think we've got to look at, the uh, number of words that are translated uh, differently depending on how old your Bible is. Yes. Temptation, I'm finding, I'm finding uh, so often that this, the, that the uh, a close synonym um, is often uh, the word challenged or confronted. Okay. Or, um, you know, something that um meets with resistance something that uh, something that um something gets up in your face and you don't like it okay so uh pray that you don't fall into temptation um of course um temptation to sin is is usually when we see those two words together that's that's a little different that's being drawn i mean that, that i mean it's a, it's a different type, type of challenge obviously yes but um anyway bring that up i i I see it especially in the in the when you see the word in newer versions, um, you realize it came out of the original translations. Uh, uh, for instance, that for the King James and so forth. But uh, sometimes it reads. I mean, what I'm suggesting really is keep the traditional uh, definition, but try it with uh, one of these synonyms, either uh, uh, looking at it as a challenge. 
uh, or a confrontation and see if see how the passage reads then. Okay, I can't get it on. I tried five different versions. It comes up on this particular word as, I mean, this particular sentence as temptation. Temptation, yeah. Okay. It's so pray that you not fall into temptation. Well, what is the temptation that these guys are facing in the garden? Well, the temptation that they're facing is actually that they not stand guard duty, that they not be intercessors like they're called to be, that they just get tired and fall asleep. That's the temptation. There's no temptation like, We'll go to a nightclub or we'll spend all your money in a casino. There's, those aren't the kinds of temptations that are here. Yeah. But rather, and the temptation into pride, too, is a predominant theme in these. Who's going to be the greater? Well, my, my works are greater than yours, you know? Yeah. So yeah. so there's a number of era, arenas of temptation that he's praying that they, and, and you pray that you don't enter into temptation. Right. Okay. Yeah, we're looking at um, uh, the tempt. After all, this is Passover. This right. is a major feast celebration mm -hmm. of the year. They just got through with a big dinner. Guess what happens to old men like us when you have a big dinner and it's evening? <laughs> and young men, too. I'm, you just uh... Sure. So. <laughs> okay. So he withdraws from them a stone's throw, kneels down, and begins to pray. Yeah. So the visual here. Uh, the parallel versions take he takes three three of the disciples into into that distance away and then he goes a little bit beyond that but the but the visual here is that these are real people on a real on a real hillside just after a big dinner and right before the most excruciating day in world history mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he begins to pray now the parallel versions tell us he prayed three times, but the sense of that is he prayed. Mm -hmm. 42. Verse 42. Father, if you're willing, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Amen. What a, what a human prayer this is. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not being disrespectful to the deity part of Christ, but this is anguish. Knowing of the beating he's going to take in a very few hours, but more importantly, knowing he'll be separated to pay for sin mm -hmm. um, and the sin of billions. I mean, it, it, uh, mm -hmm. no wonder there's some, if there wasn't some angst, we would wonder, is this really a human Jesus? Right. Oh, yeah. But Good. there's certainly angst. Yeah. So much so that, uh, well, we'll see what happens here. Uh, an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him. Which is an interesting picture that happens mostly in Luke. It doesn't happen in the other ones. But when we see the temptation of Christ in the other Gospels, right at the beginning of ministry, after the temptation, the angels come and minister to him. So we think about, whoa, how cool is that, that the human part of Jesus can be ministered to by ministering ang ang angels. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a, it's to strengthen mm -hmm. and being in anguish. He's in anguish in prayer here. Yeah. He prayed even more fervently and his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. Don't need the word like, like there. It's <laughs> actually a medical condition Yeah. that in a, given enough stress, uh, it's possible to burst small capillaries and have them mingle with sweat. And the two together make for a good sized drop, uh, falling to the ground. Amen. Uh, you know, sweating enough uh, when you, when it's literally falling off of you. That's that's heavy. Yeah, that, that's heavy. Needless okay. to say. Uh, verse forty five. When he got up from prayer and came to the disciples, he found them sleeping, exhausted from their grief. Which is an interesting from their sense. Grief. Yeah. Yeah. Why grief there? Yeah. Uh, and the answer is, he's told them, he's told them, he's told them again mm -hmm. that their time is coming. Are they actually getting it at this minute? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be a cool thing? Um, yeah. If you're willing. Yeah, something. Well, um, sure. Well, maybe they witnessed uh, this grief that he was experiencing from a distance. That's right. Um, you could and, see him. They were, they were nearby. 
Yeah. And you can imagine seeing somebody in in such heavy prayer and distress that he's sweating blood. So they wake up from sl slumber and see, see this. Yeah. See this. Okay. Perhaps that's um, an and exhausted from sorrow in New International. But um, they're just, they're, this may be the place that they're starting to actually get it. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be that it could be the uh, a guilt factor just creeping. Yeah. He said, "Pray that you don't enter into temptation." Next thing you know, they're asleep. It's now yeah. they're waking up feeling guilty about it. There you go. Perhaps. There you go. But um, obviously, very human interactions going on here. Mm -hmm. uh, but very intense. Yes. It's not. Uh, I've never seen anybody sweat blood, but I can understand. And it's how rare. It happen. It it mathematically it can happen. Yeah. It it just takes excruciating circumstances to make. Like if you tried to make it happen, you couldn't make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Like taking on the sins of the whole world, I think that might might do it. Yep. Ah. Uh, so uh, why why you get up pray? Found them sleeping, exhausted from grief. Why are you sleeping? He asked him. Get up and pray so that you won't fall into temptation. Um, there's that word again. Maybe the, the whole idea of being challenged to a point of um, just incredible difficulty. Amen. Judas's betrayal of Jesus, verse 47. While he was still speaking, suddenly a mob came. And one of the 12 named Judas was leading them. He came near Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the son of man with a kiss? And when we he, think about, mm -hmm. we think about the prophecies about Judas. He'll be betrayed by a friend mm -hmm. and uh, how, how excruciating that is. Uh, if somebody betrays you, you don't care about it all. It's bad. Mm. If you're, if one of your 12 was carried the money basket and was, Part of the miracle teams that you sent out betrays you. That's brutal. Amen. Verse 49. Uh, when those around him saw what was going to happen, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. Okay, so um, obviously... Um, <laughs> You're in your your uh, little uh, p place of quiet meditation, and the Roman uh, guard plus the uh, plus the temple guard uh, show up in the dark, led by Judas. Uh, this has got to be a very stunning moment. And, and you yes. think about the the and subtlety of this of this verse too. Mm. I mean, you got armed soldiers. Yeah. These are the Roman soldiers that conquered the known world. Yep. You've got armed temple police. Yeah as as well trained as they can be right and so peter picks up a sword and chops off the high priest i mean you got like all these guys there all armor swords spirit, and he chops the high priest off who's only there as really a messenger to make mm. sure that the thing gets done right mm. <laughs> it's a kind of a you mm -hmm. know it has no spiritual value at all but it is an interesting um it is an interesting statement that that is the person that Peter cut the ear off of. Yeah. But it's also fascinating because, next next verse. Uh, sir, can, can you see him? But Jesus responded, no more of this. And touching his ear, he healed him. Okay. So now the high priest's most trusted servant has to go back and say, uh, no. Uh, no. Well, well, we captured him, mm -hmm. and uh, and I used to have this ear, and it used to be on the ground, and Jesus picked it up and stuck it back on. I mean, that conversation has to be stunning. Uh, does he even tell the high priest? Well, the soul, the the temple guard have to report to all the details to the high priest. It's a fascinating picture here mm -hmm. that the high priest now comes again face to face with the fact that Jesus is the Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was, some people estimate that, that Peter, they assume Peter swung the sword, uh, was trying to kill the guy. Yeah, and uh, uh, for God's intervention was that He simply wound him, and for the sake of creating this miracle when yeah. Jesus gets to heal him and how that changes, you know, how that should temper your, uh, 
your perspective of who he is and what it's what who you know who's doing what to who here. There you go. Um, so it's a it's a tense moment and um, um, a bit violent, but uh, the Lord's intercession is such that he rhymes it up with the with the words. No more of this, okay? No so more, no of more this. Of violence. So when he's, we find he's showing too that he's showing too that he's bringing a divine power with him. He's there yes. in divine power, and this version doesn't share it, but uh, at least doesn't show up. Doesn't show up in the next chapter, does it? Where Jesus says to this cohort, and they had to bring probably hundreds of guys because. Uh, they didn't know how many people were going to be with with the Lord at the time, and they had to overwhelm them. So there could be hundreds of hundreds of armed men there. And Jesus asks them, "Who are you looking for?" <laughs> they say, "Jesus of Nazareth." Yes. He says, "I am He." I am He. And they fall down. There you go. And I got to imagine hundreds of guys dressed in armor with weapons, metal helmets, and so on. that must have sounded like a train wreck. That's right. And particularly because these, these are Roman soldiers. Uh -huh. Even the worst trained Roman soldier is trained to withstand five square feet. Sure. Five feet square from an uh, invading army. So right. this is a massive, you know, whatever the number is, this is a stunning revelation. Yep. He sticks the ear back on, and I'm not being irreverent with that, but that's how it looks. Yeah. Picks it up. Yep. It, you know, <laughs> back on yeah and so then you think and then these guys like pass out from the glory of god and we're surprised some people are surprised when people pass out from being in god's presence not pass mm. out but mm. get slain in the spirit they think oh that doesn't happen well i'll tell you <laughs> yeah. it's a fearsome thing to come into the hands of the living god sure yeah this is but the point is that I look at this as one of the of the bookends of the passion week there you go he shows not only his divine power in healing but his divine authority That's in right. being able to say to these guys who are you looking for here I am bam <laughs> there you go divine authority and power right there and then the other end of the passion week on the cross the very end of the cru of the crucifixion when he says uh, it is. He screams out to Telestai, the end of it all. But this in a, in a loud voice, nobody dies on a cross that way. It's it's simply a matter of your life ebbing away very, very, very slowly. There you go. And you just can't tell exactly at what point the person expired. Uh, that's why they break the legs to be sure and so forth in many cases. Um, but he ends the crucifixion with Tetelestai. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that, I mean, you can imagine these folks are standing around there in the dark waiting for this guy to go. And uh, and to hear that, I mean, it was just alarming to the point of earth shattering. There you go. But those are the, that's the, that, that to me bookends the point that God is in, he is in control of the whole thing. He this is. is really, and along the way, there's some uh, supernatural instances mm -hmm. too, but but that frames Passion Week. And 52. 52. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, temple police, and elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a criminal? Every day while I was with you in the temple, you never laid hands on me. Oops, lost my mouse again. How is this working? Not so good. <laughs> We've had a, quite a morning, folks, with the technology here. There it is. Uh, I, while I was with you in the temple, you never laid a hand on me then. But this is your hour and the dominion of darkness. Wow. And he says again, after they get up, uh, who you should say you're looking for? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So, and he allowed himself to be taken. So we could spend weeks on the garden, but um, it is glorious that what an incredible sense that Jesus had angst in the garden shows his humanity as well as his deity. Sure. The deity part of him knows about the suffering that's to come. The humanity part doesn't. But the humanity part is influenced by the deity part such that the, the incredible anguish of this sweats blood, 
his disciples fall asleep on him and then and then betrayed by a friend mm. the um the humanity of christ in here is just yeah. eye-opening yeah he had he died as a human being he had to yeah he had to give a human life it says as the scripture says by sin by one man sin came into the world mm -hmm. by another man sin was uh, abolished life, life came into world. and he's Amen. the one lord we thank you for loving us for dying to set us free we thank you that you are good and that your mercy endureth forever lead us guide us fill us again with your spirit and we give you thanks in christ's name amen amen yes thank you again lord for your for your word your spirit we pray again for your anointing to bring these words to life for us and in us that we may have them as uh, your precious resources to live according to uh, whatever way pleases you best and brings the most glory to you. This is our fervent prayer in your name, Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Bye. Blessings to you all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for praying for us. There we go.